Hey everyone, it's Samzy here and I'm back with another video for you. It has been a while. In this video, I will be talking about the five things I wish I knew before I decided to start learning data science. And I've decided to do this video as a few weeks ago, I posted on my Instagram this post and it got quite a large engagement. So I thought why not make a video out of it. So here you go. So number one, data cleaning as well as collection and validating takes like the largest percentage of your time as a data scientist. And I only found out about this during my first year of my master's, like towards the end, when I attended a conference and it was pretty much like every, what everyone was talking about. And to my surprise, I was like, this is quite disappointing. And one of the reasons for this is that most of the time when you are like studying data science, you only learn about how to clean data using pandas or using tidy data tables. And you learn with data with that's already clean. Um, well, when you work in industry, you get pretty much raw data, data that's coming up from systems, systems that are like a little bit messy because not every company has their infrastructure like sorted out. And when you get this data, you still need to validate it, you still need to clean it, and it's usually big amounts of data. So now you need to clean it at scale and you need to be efficient with it and you need to use other tools that you perhaps might not have known of. And you need to create like data pipelines and all of this stuff to make it like automated. Yeah, they don't teach you that stuff in school. So that's point number one. Point number two, you don't get to decide what problems you get to solve. If you do, then lucky you. But in industry, most of the problems that you need to solve are the ones that are going to add the most business value. And this is usually determined by someone who wears like the product owner hat and you have to do what they tell you to do. This is why I always advise if you're a data scientist and you really want to set the expectations clear up front, when you're interviewing or looking for a role, make sure that you are interested in that industry's problems. If you're gonna work in an industry that's, for example, supply chain and logistics, make sure you actually care about infantry management and all of that stuff that's involved in that industry. And if you are interested in a specific domain in data science, like NLP or computer vision, make sure that that industry that you're entering actually has those types of problems to solve. Otherwise, you might just get stuck like building forecasting models for the rest of your life. So point number three is that in the long run, you need to be good at programming in order to advance your career as well as to create models that are going to be useful. So models that tend to go into production need to be very efficient and they need to be scalable and they need to run on top of certain infrastructures in order to do so. And in order to get all of these different parts working together, you need to write code in a format that is like follows certain structures and certain standards. And most of these come from software engineering um, backgrounds and stuff. So this is where like a lot of the software engineering in data science comes into play, learning how to use certain cloud technologies, learning about a little bit about infrastructure and architecture. You don't have to really master it, but it does help to understand how it works and will help with your communication with DevOps. And when things go wrong and things are not working, it's easier for you to debug stuff, to know what's going on and to act accordingly so that you don't waste a lot of time. I don't know why I thought that I would just work in R and send somebody a zip file, because when I really think about it, that is like very ridiculous. And these days there's a lot of like security concerns and rules like in the EU, we have things like GDPR on how data needs to be stored and how it needs to be handled. You need to like take all of those compliance issues into place and into consideration when you are designing your models and building your data science products. Point number four, simple methods will almost always beat more complex methods simply because if you can do something like in an easy way, why bother doing it complex way in the first place? Especially when timelines are so important and when like your business owner doesn't really care what your model looks like or what it's running on, they just want to see results. Um, it comes to defaulting to more simple approaches that will be easier to communicate and easier to add value in overall. Interpretability of models and your solution is quite key in order to get buy-in from business. So you need to be able to know how to break down your neural network model and tell an audience how that works and how it's going. This becomes very difficult and challenging with those types of algorithms. And that's why sometimes it's just easy to default to like a linear regression model and a random forest model. 
because it's just easier to communicate and to get buy-in from business owners. There are also other reasons why simple approaches are more preferred. Example, very complex methods require large amounts of data, which might not be available or accessible, so we will default to our simple method. Another thing is some people just appreciate simplicity. They love simplicity. They want something simple and you must just deliver something simple. Point number five is the various roles within data science that require different technical levels. So when I started studying data science or heard of data science, I only knew of another role similar to it called data analyst. And I knew the difference between these two roles is that data science were more involved in um, applying like scientific methods into solving a problem. There was a more like machine learning aspect to it that's not necessary in a data analyst role. And as time went on, um, I found out about other roles like the machine learning engineer, the DevOps engineer, the data engineers. And you're like, what is going on? So as a data scientist, you end up actually touching on little bits and pieces of these different types of roles. After like a year of being a data scientist, um, it's quite critical to understand what you loved about the role and what it's going to take for you maybe to branch into another role, what's going to take for you to become a senior data scientist. And funny enough, some people consider um, a machine learning engineer as a senior data scientist. Yeah, like some organizations have defined it like that. So it's really also these names that are being used also depend on a company, like they have different contexts in a different company. So understanding these roles is something that I am still trying to understand at the moment myself. I know they're different, but I'm not exactly sure, like as a data scientist, like to what degree and what extent I need to have so much knowledge of like DevOps or software engineering. And the more knowledge I have about software engineering or data engineering, the better data scientist I am. But then I feel like I am then performing like five roles of different people and I should be like getting paid like five salaries. So I'm only getting one. So it's very confusing. It took a lot out of me, that final point. It did. I feel like it was, a, it got a little bit personal. <laughs> Sorry guys. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I thank you for tuning in and I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or you want to like write something that you thought was relatable or something that I've missed, please indicate it in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this going forward, me telling you about my experience as a data scientist and like all of this like knowledge I'm sharing, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. And thank you again to my patrons. You make making these videos and a lot of my content very possible. And I got a couple new patrons. So shout out to these new patrons that I got. And yeah, I'm very excited and happy about it. And you actually motivated me to come back to YouTube and make this video. So you are so incredibly awesome. And to find out how to become a patron, you can find the link in the description of this video below. Bye bye.